Good afternoon, Rich Nass, Executive Vice President with Open Systems Media, here for this week's installment of Five Minutes With. This week, I will be speaking to Jeff Mulligan, who is the Chairman of the Laura Alliance. Good afternoon, Jeff. Hey, Rich. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. Uh, before we get into the Laura standard and that kind of thing, just give me a quick overview of what the alliance is all about. Um, you know, for people who aren't informed. So, Rich, the Laura Alliance is a global um, consortium of companies that are all working to um, create an interoperable standard um, based upon the Laura long-range radio technology for the IoT, and in addition to. Um, the standard, working on interoperability certification, um, and getting the message out about how this can solve communication, some communication problems for the IoT. So you say interoperability. What do you want to interoperate with? Well, we want, um, we want devices to interoperate across the Internet of Things, but certainly all devices that are based on the LoRaWAN um, specification, we want to make sure and ensure that they all interoperate. Okay. So there's other low-power, long-range wireless standards out there. Um, why should I be interested in LoRaWAN as opposed to one of the others? Um, well, the LoRaWAN, um, uh, first of all, the radio technology provides extremely low cost, extremely um, low battery or power utilization, and yet at um, extremely long distance. So, you know, we're talking um, coin cell battery operated devices um, uh, that can communicate over uh, 10 kilometers. Um, and, and uh, again, provide open standards-based communication, so work with TCP IP and the Internet um, itself. Interesting. So I, I'm assuming we're not sending video and big files like that. What are the, what's, what's the typical application for a, a WAN like this? Yeah, you're exactly right. We're not, we're not talking about streaming video or, or even audio. Um, it really is telemetry data. You know, so I think a lot of the applications that, that we're seeing folks um, take up are, um, you know, wide, uh, again, wide area communications. This is part of the LP WAN space, low power, wide area. So you think about smart cities, um, smart parking, intelligent transportation, um, just recently in Philadelphia, one of our sessions was, was focused on smart agriculture. Um, uh, and, and interestingly enough, um, also building control. So rather than having to build complex mesh networks using technology like LoRa, you can have a single gateway cover um, you know, the entire building. So, so perimeter control, access control, um, uh, power monitoring, temperature control, all of that from just a single access point. So say you're looking at a typical office building, say, I don't know, 15 stories, you know, something like that. How many of the LoRa gateways would you need to outfit a um, building like that? Yeah, great question. Uh, we actually have uh, in Washington, D.C., um, downtown next to the White House, there's a, a building that, that is um, installing a, a LoRa or has installed a LoRaWAN network, um, and they've covered a 10-story building with a single gateway. So 15 stories to have deep penetration and, and, and excellent coverage, probably two gateways. And again, we're talking, this isn't a huge capital expense. The LoRaWAN technology, um, the gateways are, you know, somewhere in the order of 500 to less than a thousand dollars each. So you're outfitting an entire building for under two thousand dollars. Yes. Wow, that's pretty interesting. So, but what's the maximum number of nodes you can have on that network? Um. Uh, well, and it, 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 you know, I hate to say your mileage may vary, um, but it certainly does depending on your application, right? If if you have lots of sensors that need to talk quite often, you get obviously um, sort of less density, and and you you want to add more gateways. Um, typically, we're thinking between five thousand and ten thousand devices per gateway. So, okay, so you really are outfitting an entire building with that number of of nodes. Yes. Hmm. I mean, if you think about building control, two gateways, 20,000 devices, 15 floors, yeah, I think we've pretty much covered the entire building. Hmm. Now, I know that this is being rolled out in certain cities as well. What sort of coverage do we have today, and what can we expect in the, in the short term? 
Well, um, it depends. If you're if you're looking at um, South Korea, just announced South Korean Telecom announced that that they've um, covered the entire peninsula of South Korea. Um, 90% of the land mass and 99% of their population. Um, so, you know, very and, and deep building penetration across that entire space. Um, uh, in, in Europe, we have folks like Boig, Proximus, KPN, who are covering um, uh, large sections of the Netherlands, Belgium, um, France. Tata just announced that they're going to be rolling out a network to cover 90% of their population in India. And then if, you want to, if we want to shift over the pond, come back here to the U.S., um, uh, there are um, a couple of network service providers that are um, coming into the U.S. Comcast just announced they're doing pilots in three cities with other rollouts across the, um, uh, the country, and Senate. Um, a private operator um, has has networks in various areas across the U.S. Um, the Northeast, uh, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, and Los Angeles. But Rich, one of the other interesting things about LoRa that differentiates it from most of the other technologies out there is we don't build our own network. We don't run our own network. Um, we don't presuppose to to control you know or or presuppose what your build what your business plan is. If you want to build a network to cover your strip mall or you want to build a network to cover your campus or your building or your city, um, you can go out, buy the equipment, and put it in and run it yourself, or you could contract to somebody else to do it. So in some of these examples, like South Korea, for, for example, who's footing the bill for something like, something like that? Is that the government? Well, in South Korea, it was South Korean Telecom. Um, so, so they've, you know, they put the investment in. And again, it's not, we're not talking, um, you know, the investment that you might be thinking about uh, um, for, um, uh, for cellular coverage. Um, mm -hmm. South Korean Telecom said uh, their, their public numbers are they put in 12,000 gateways um, to cover the entire population of South Korea, um, uh, and again, like I said, 90% of the land mass. And these are not um, $100,000 gateways. These are gateways that are, now they truly are industrial grade gateways, so they're probably on the order of $5,000 to $10,000 a piece. But let's even take the high end, Rich, and multiply all of that out. For $12 million, they covered the entire population of South Korea. But then how do they get back their money? I mean, they're not doing it just to be good people. What's the Oh, they part? certainly aren't. I mean, they, they are, um, they're taking the attitude of we've built a network. Um, now people can start to deploy smart city um, uh, technologies, smart parking, a lot of the things that I talked about. Um, one, of the, one of the interesting applications is, is in garbage, um, garbage control and collection. Um, uh, again, parking is a huge one. Um, uh, street light management to to reduce the uh, um, electrical consumption, all of that. Very cool, very cool. Where would somebody go to get more information on the, on the technology? Well, certainly the LoRa Alliance is, is probably the best place. We have a website, www.lora-alliance.org. Um, and, it, you know, there's, it, the, we have a lot of information about the specification. The specification is openly available. We've had about 20,000 downloads, and you don't have to be a member of the Alliance to, to download it. It's available. We have a lots of information that's available. Um, but if you then want to dig deeper in, if you want to be part of, of this, this 500-member ecosystem to help build the, this next generation technology, you're welcome to, to come to the website and, and join the Alliance. But what does that mean exactly? What's the advantage of joining the alliance? Well, um, as a member, you certainly you get early access to some of the work and the roadmap of where we're going with the technology, with certification. Um, you get to provide input into, um, we, we just, for example, um, uh, demonstrated firmware over-the-air updates. Well, our members um, uh, of the Alliance actually got together, um, helped define what firmware over the air updates, the multicast, um, uh, the packet formats and things like that. And so as a member, you get to participate in those early discussions and help um, form the basis of where the technology and where the Alliance is going. Wow, that's really interesting. I'm afraid, Jeff, we have used up our five minutes though. So we're gonna have to cut <laughs> it here and uh, we've let people know where they get more information. Um, I'd like to thank you for your time. That was Jeff Mulligan. He is the chairman of the 
Laura Warren Alliance, and I'm Rich Nass of Open Social Media. Have a great day, Jeff. Thanks, Rich. You have a great afternoon.